Today we're going to talk about bond hybridization and sigma and pi bonds. You may recall that the orbitals that electrons reside in come in many different shapes and sizes. For example, the s orbitals are round, the p orbitals are dumbbell shaped, and the shapes that the d and f orbitals come in are just bizarre. However, now that you know a little about Vesper, you should ha also have noticed that many Vesper shapes are symmetrical. For example, a methane molecule has both a tetrahedral electron and a tetrahedral molecular geometry with symmetrical bond angles that are 109.5 degrees. Well, how can this make sense when carbon's ground state electron configuration is this, 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. Of carbon's four valence electrons, two are in the 2s orbitals and two are in different 2p orbitals because of Hunt's rule. The s and p orbitals are different shapes. Furthermore, the 2p orbitals have different orientations. One way the symmetrical tetrahedral methane molecule could occur is if somehow the 2s and 2p orbitals were able to combine to make four hybrid orbitals that were not exactly s's and were not exactly p's but were somewhere in between. That would give us an electron configuration that looks something like this, where sp3 denotes four equal energy hybrid orbitals that were made by hybridizing or blending together the 2s and 2p orbitals. Well, when we're talking about hybridization, there are several different combinations of hybrid orbitals that you can have. For the AP exam, there are three we need to know about, sp hybridization, sp2 hybridization, and sp3 hybridization. And each of these orbitals aligns closely with the Vesper shapes we've been studying. If we take a look at this table, we'll see that the linear electron geometry with a bond angle of 180 degrees has sp hybridization, the trigonal planar, with a bond angle of 120 degrees has sp2 hybridization and tetrahedral molecules with angles of 109.5 have sp3 hybridization. For sp hybridization, in order to get into that linear shape, 1s 1s orbital will hybridize with 1p orbital. The final shape is something like this tiny asymmetrical dumbbell shape, but you get two of these together and then you get electrons in orbitals that will allow you to bond two things in a linear fashion, each side being symmetrical. So when you see a Vesper shape that is linear, think sp hybridization. Now, if we take a look at our trigonal planar geometry, in order to get something that is going to have three symmetrical orbitals that will bond in that trigonal planar way, we have to hybridize 1s orbital and 2p orbitals. And when we do this, we get these funny little asymmetrical dumbbell shaped things, but they happen to form three symmetrical orbitals that we can use to make our trigonal planar shape and have it be nice and symmetric with those bond angles of 120 degrees. Now, say we want to make a molecule with a tetrahedral configuration. Well, if we want four symmetrical orbitals, we will have to hybridize 1s with 3p orbitals. Again, we get these equivalent little strange asymmetrical dumbbell shapes, but when we put them all together, we get this nice tetrahedral cluster of hybrid orbitals that we can connect other atoms to to make this lovely little tetrahedral shape with bond angles of 109.5 degrees. Now let's look at some examples for how we'll need to use these on the AP exam. We have this molecule here, and we're going to look at this carbon on the left. 
we notice that this has two electron domains and is a linear shape. And because it has a linear shape, we can say that this demonstrates sp hybridization. Now let's look at this carbon over here. If we take a look at the structure, we can see that it has three electron domains. So it is a trigonal planar molecular and electron geometry. And in order to get this, the orbitals have to be sp2 hybridized. And this is what we're going to get when we have a trigonal planar shape. For our third example, let's look at the nitrogen. We would see that it has an electron geometry of tetrahedral, even though the molecular geometry is a trigonal pyramid. Atoms that form tetrahedral geometries are going to be sp3 hybridized. So to summarize, when you're asked to figure out the hybridization, of a particular atom, you look at Vesper. You look at the electron configuration. You look at the number of domains. And remember, if it is linear, it is sp hybridized. If it is trigonal planar, it has sp2 hybridization. And if it's tetrahedral, it has sp3 hybridization. Now, there are other types of hybridization using d orbitals, but we don't need to know those for the AP exam. Now let's talk about sigma bonding and pi bonding. Sigma bonds occur when there is a head-to-head -head overlap of orbitals. They can be s orbitals, p orbitals, d orbitals, or hybrid orbitals. This picture shows an example of several sigma bonds, and they're denoted by that little Greek letter there, sigma. And you can see that there is direct overlap of these orbitals um, forming these bonds. One thing you need to know about sigma bonds is that there's free rotation around the bond. Let's take a look at these molecules and we can twist the ends any which way. These are very flexible, they can twist around the axis. Pi bonds are bonds that are formed by side-to-side -side overlap of unhybridized p orbitals. In this picture, we have one pi bond that's formed by two unhybridized p orbitals. In this picture, we have two pi bonds, and they're formed by different overlapping p orbitals. Now, you need to know that every bond has a sigma bond in it. Single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds, they each have one sigma bond in them. Now, double bonds will have a sigma bond and a pi bond. Triple bonds have a sigma bond and two pi bonds. So here is an example. Here the shaded region shows a single bond that only has a sigma bond. Now, we have a triple bond here. So this bond would have one sigma and two pi's. Now let's look over here between these carbons. We have a single bond, so that will be one sigma bond. If we look between the carbon and the oxygens, that's a double bond. So we have one sigma and one pi. And looking over here between the nitrogen and the hydrogen, we have a single bond, so that's a sigma bond only, and that's going to be similar with the other hydrogen. You should know that pi bonds are rigid. There's no rotation around the axis because if we rotated it, we would have to break the bond. When we're looking at bond strength, sigma bonds are going to be the strongest because of the head-to-head -head overlap. However, remember that double bonds and triple bonds have a sigma bond as part of them, and there's extra strength that's being added by the pi bonds. So you should now be familiar with sp hybridization, and you should also be familiar with sigma bonds and pi bonds.